Hey guys, my name is Shai, and this is the reading for the first week of Tara season. I'm recording this on Tuesday, April 19th. And um, it was funny, last week when I recorded the video, I added on a couple extra days at the end, just because it felt like the thing to do. And here I am, I ended up being a couple extra days late on recording my weekly video. It all ended up working out perfectly despite the delays. And you know, that has been a theme. I gotta say guys, like April has been a complete blur. Like I don't even know, <laughs> I don't even know what's been happening. I am literally just today starting to feel like I'm waking up out of the, the like, firestorm that has been all kinds of different things happening. But the, the thing I want to focus on or highlight specifically is this, even though the energy has been really fast, it's been very fast because it was airy season and the uh, we had all planets direct and it was just go, 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 go. And we had all these solar flares and geomagnetic storms. Uh, but at the same time, many, uh, several things for myself and for everybody, this was like a collective thing. Several things were like taking way too long, like way too long. Several things would last for days and like an energy would come. And even though the energy was really fast and intense, it was like it would last for days and days and days. And then you'd think, okay, it's finally going to be over. And then you'd find out that no, it was going to be a few more days longer. It, it, and, and we're still kind of in that. I'm going to, that's what this is about. I'm going to talk more about this in a second, but just to highlight like that weird type of tension that we're all kind of under of it's like, is it fast or is it slow? Like, am I coming or going? Like what is going on here? There's this weird tension, this weird contrast between things being too fast and things simultaneously being too slow. It, it It's like, um, I think that's a, that's a, if you, I'm just trying to imagine like a river, right? That can happen with currents. I think sometimes where the current on top is moving really fast, but then the current underneath is going much more slowly. It, it's like, it's that. And it is, um, quite uncomfortable for some people to be experienced because it's very confusing and it makes you feel like you don't know what's happening. Um, and so we are partially shifting out of that because Aries season is ending. You know, I'm recording this like really like right as the sun is moving into Tara season. And so that's this beautiful slow down and like grounding. But the thing with Taurus energy is that it has that stubborn streak and it can also be the energy that will absolutely refuse to change. So that is a little bit uncomfortable here. And it, it, it this is, this is it guys, like this whole next month is going to encapsulate the energy of 2022 for, for, for me. This is how I'm feeling this because as I keep talking about over and over and over again, the nodes, the, the lunar nodes are in Taurus and Scorpio, right? North node is in Taurus. The eclipses are coming, in, you know, in, in very the very end of April, we have the eclipse, a solar eclipse in Taurus, and two weeks after that, it's the full moon eclipse in Scorpio. All of this is, um, you know, I heard somebody describe it as, uh, what was his name? What's his name? Lee Harris. Lee Harris. He's, he's on YouTube. He's really good if you like monthly energy updates. I, I really highly recommend him. He described the energy of 2022 as unfixing the fixed, unfixing the fixed and unfixing, um, in, in, not in terms of like repairing it, but in terms of stopping it from being the same. It's changing it, right? Changing the fixed. So another way you could say changing the unchangeable, <laughs> making something that has been the same forever, making it change, making it transform, um, which is not a thing that Taurus wants. Um, and that's, you can see here, I have all the fixed signs, right? The fixed signs, Leo, Scorpio, um, Aquarius, and Taurus all highlighted here. And this is massively emphasized because of a um, kind of a, a little bit of an esoteric transit going on in the sky that uh, I didn't act, I stumbled across it by accident. I didn't, none of my like regular places that I go to, to like, you know, check out the astrological updates. Nobody was highlighting this, but I noticed it. Like I was led to it by just like looking up random things and I noticed this. So the nodes in Scorpio and Taurus, they, the nodes typically are retrograde. Like they move backwards through the signs, right? Like the, the, like the North node was in Gemini. Now it's Taurus. That's reverse of how everything else is moving. Right? So the nodes just stationed direct, which is kind of like the nodal version of doing a retrograde, and they are stationing direct at 22 degrees Scorpio and Taurus. <laughs> and they're going to, apparently they're going to stay there um, for a couple of months. They're going to be staying like hovering around roughly 22 degrees on the nodes. So it's, it's a bit of like a, a stationary thing. And meanwhile, 
Saturn is hanging out in Aquarius at 22 degrees. Saturn is going to be moving into like creeping up into 24 degrees and then moving back uh, retrograde back to 22 degrees. And I noticed that because that is happening on the very bottom of my birth chart, like the, the nadir or the IC, depending on what you want to call it. So this is <laughs> um, basically, I noticed this for my own personal transits, but this is of course not just affecting me. This is affecting everybody. So the thing going on here is that we have the nodes kind of taking a chill pill, taking a pit stop, and they're stopping. They're stopping at 22 degrees. Meanwhile, Saturn is in Aquarius, forming a square to both of the lunar nodes. And when Saturn squares something, that is Saturn saying, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, I got something to, to say to you. I got something to teach you. I have something to show you how to let go of it. I have something to help you transform, right? Um, we don't I think most people don't think of Saturn as a transformative energy. They think of him as this like, you know, pain in the ass kind of guy. Um, I really see Saturn as, yeah, he teaches lessons in this uncomfortable kind of way, but they are to help us transform. So Saturn is, he's, <laughs> you know, he's, he's doing that. He's like slamming the table saying, hey, look, it is well past time that something changes. It is way, way beyond past the point of reason here. Something has to change. Something needs to be changed. Something needs to be let go of. Something needs to be transformed. It, it's like, it's time. The time is now. And Saturn is having something to say about this. So that's basically the highlight of the week. And there's no other like major transits happening this week. There were some sextiles and stuff, which I'm not going to men really mention. Um, but next week is going to be crazy. Um, so I'll leave that till next week. The, the main thing for this week is it's kind of like a... Um, a stabilization, shifting out of the really fast moving energy of Aries season. And we're getting ready for the big shifts that are coming up next week and with the two eclipses coming up. So this week we want to be getting stabilized. Um, and we are going to have to reconcile ourselves to this strange feeling of slow down, of obstacles, of setbacks, of delays, while at the same time, realizing that through this slowdown, setback, delay, frustration, kind of stagnant feeling that it is a transformative time. It's like a paradox, okay? This is going to be very, 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 very paradoxical. And as I see, you see, I have Mercury written down here because this week, I think on the 24th, Mercury is going to be conjunct the north node in Taurus at 22 degrees, which is also going to mean Mercury is going to be um, squaring Saturn. So <laughs> if you have um, if you find this week that you have angry thoughts in your head about yourself, or I mean, it could be somebody else, right? But I typically feel like for most of you guys, you attack yourselves first, you attack yourselves instead of attacking others. Um, so if you have, if you, if you hear angry thoughts in your head this week, those are thoughts to be released. Okay. Those are thoughts to be released. Um, and Try to transform the thoughts, filter the thoughts so that you are simply taking action on to solve your problem. It's like focus on the solution, not the problem. Focus on the solution, not how you got there. Um, focus on what you can do right here, right now to move forward, right? Um, Saturn is going to be pushing that quite hard. Like a, a, an example that comes to mind is say you went on vacation and imagine you were binge eating all week because you were on vacation and you deserved it. And you were like, I'm done. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna relax and let go. I'm gonna be drinking and eating and just, you know, and you come back and you find out now your jeans don't really fit, right? And now, and now someone could get really hard on themselves, right? They could be like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I eat so much? That was like, that was really bad. I should have known better. And now like, oh, now I'm fat and blah, blah, blah. And having all those angry thoughts about yourself. It's like, don't go there. <laughs> don't do that. It's time to stop. Recognize that those thoughts do not help you whatsoever. And just go, okay, so say, if your jeans don't fit, what can you do? Okay, well, what you do today is that you go for a walk and you eat three reasonable balanced meals and that's it. And then the next day, and then you just, you know, you just get back into your routine. You just get back to where you want to be. You just focus on what you can do right now. Don't like fall into those angry, angry thoughts, right? Um, however, those are like that. That's just one example of how that could go, right? But it's like, don't let the angry thoughts, <laughs> don't entertain them. Don't entertain them. They are unwelcome house guests. Tell them to pack their bags and go and... <laughs> Just focus on what you can do right here, right now, to keep moving forward. That is, that is what's gonna serve you the best for the rest of Tara season. Just like putting your blinders on, and what can you do right here, right now? Um, okay, let's get some cards. I have to think. 
Rosalie for sending me, for donating, gifting me this beautiful Queen of the Moon Oracle. I received it on the full moon and I have been absolutely loving it. So I am excited to draw a couple of cards here. <sighs> Wisdom, waning gibbous. Oh, oh my goodness. Is that, are you kidding me? Look, it's 22, 22, 22, 22. Because <laughs> we got all this. Um, by the way, guys, 22 is my number. My birthday is on the 22nd. And back in 2019, when I manifested a massive upgrade and shift in my life, I, <laughs> in the Taco Bell drive through before I went and had, we, we had to go have a family meeting. We had a family meeting at the park, right? And so we went through the Taco Bell drive through to get our like, fuel to go to the park and have our family meeting and the, I remember it was so funny um the the total at Taco Bell was 2222 and I, I was just kind of waking up at this point just getting into all this stuff uh and I remember going it like rang inside me like a bell 2222 I was like oh my god oh my god everything is about to change for the better and then we went to the park and had this whole conversation where we like figured out where we we're gonna move and what we were gonna do and blah 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 and we figured it all out and then that was the moment that initiated like a massive change and put me where I am now and with my life being so <laughs> much more comfortable and better oh my god I like as I actually physically moved we got into a, like a nice place um so anyway i'm telling that story because 22 22 22 <laughs> repeating twos are like for me my best sign so <laughs> positive change is coming through the other side and if it has to come like if you go through like uncomfortableness and difficulties first you know like when i had to move when i got that 22 22 and we had to have this big weird conversation you know with my husband and my stepson figuring what we were going to do like a big whole thing it was like you know it was it was a challenge and then we had to move and everything was it was all a big challenge it was all a big challenge but it put me in the best years of my life right it's like after you go through this challenge you will be in the best years of your life 21 protection because you are protected you are protected wisdom protection i'm really noticing the reflection on these cards you can like see my room <laughs> how often does that happen i've never noticed that before you can see the camera weird <laughs> that really distracted me that like super distracted me i don't even know what i was saying um wisdom and protection and something about these reflections resilience we're gonna need that guys we're gonna need that wait that's 21 what is this 24 okay so now everyone knows how bad my eyes are <laughs> 20 <laughs> I thought that was 21, but then I actually did pull 21. Um, there's something interesting with that. The reflections, the reflections. What are we meant to know about reflections? Use this 3D as a mirror, okay? The 3D world around you is a mirror for what is happening energetically, spiritually, cosmically. <laughs> the 3D mirror, okay? Big, 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 big theme for Tara season, the 3D mirror. This is like really inviting you to understand and to like experience and to ponder on every level. Like the stuff you see around you, the stuff you see happening around you, it is a reflection. It is a mirror. Two of wands. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Another two. Eight of Cups, walking away. That's like unfixing the fixed, right? Changing the unchangeable. It is time to let it go. And justice. <sighs> that justice card here, whew, it's giving me huge shivers. It feels like pulling down divine justice from, from above. It feels like pulling it down, pulling it down. It is. It feels like it is time for justice to be reflected to you in the physical. It is time for justice to be reflected to you in the physical. Um, you have been cultivating wisdom, right? You have been in a bubble of protection. Um, 
this is almost feels like it, it's time to take the training wheels off and allow yourself to walk out into the unknown. But like it might, you might feel that you're leaving the protective bubble behind. You might feel like you're even leaving your protection behind, but you're not, right? The protection comes with you. The protection comes with you. Nothing is, nothing is actually being lost. The protection is coming with you. The person you used to be is coming with you. You don't need to choose between who you used to be and who you are becoming. You can be both. Of course, the aspects of yourself that no longer serve you, the aspects of yourself that are just no longer a vibrational match for you, those leave. But it's like, don't worry about losing something that is really supposed to come with you because it is coming with you. It comes with you. It comes with you. It, 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 there's a blending here, a blending, a blending of, I mean, whatever it is that you're balancing, right? Whatever it is that you're balancing, you can think of it in terms of south node, north node, right? Which I always kind of, um, you know, I first got into astrology and read that, you know, the south node was like the big bad thing that, you know, you're, you were stuck in and then you need to grow out of it and grow into your north node. And there is definitely that north node journey, but I'm guided more and more now to really understand that it, it you know, the north, the south node and north node journey, it, it, ultimately it's a balance of it. You strike the balance between south node and north node. And to have the nodes kind of hovering around at 22 and 22 degrees, right? 22 degrees. It's like they're each balancing themselves and then they're each, then, then coming together and balancing the spectrum, coming together, balancing in unity and just run with that metaphor. How, how, how many places in your life can you find that, right? Inside of yourself, balancing your inner energies, right? And then balancing yourself between someone else who was also balancing their energy, balancing yourself between yourself and the universe. It, it's like, it's, it's like this whole web this 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 web of balanced of energies independently coming into balance and then creating a web coming together creating a web and network so that's kind of what i see is is actually happening um it, it's like a chain is only as strong as its weakest link right? You could say, but we're not talking about a chain, right? That's very linear. We're talking about a web, an entire fishnet, an entire fishnet web. Okay. And it's like the web is only as strong as its weakest node, right? If you imagine a fishnet every time, you know, when the net comes together, right? The nodes of the fishnet, that's what we're doing. We're building a web and the web couldn't really come online until each and every individual node in the web reached a sufficient level of resiliency, reached a sufficient level of wisdom, right? Reached a sufficient level of wisdom. Um, every, everybody had to strengthen themselves. Everybody had to strengthen, strengthen themselves through like working out their muscles, like through challenges, right? Challenges is how you, like literally how you grow stronger. Um, and it, it feels like whoever is involved in this, whoever is involved in this network, <laughs> eight, eight of pentacles just fell out. So yeah, we're building, we're building this network. We're building this network. Whoever is in, whoever wants to join the network, has reached a sufficient level of like inner stability. Six of Wands, victory and triumph. And the Emperor, <laughs> self-empowerment, self-empowerment, right? That you accomplished in Aries season, the Emperor is Aries energy, right? You empowered yourself, you remembered who you really are, you stepped into your power, you overcame some kind of adversity or challenge, and now you're sitting at the top of your pyramid, right? You're sitting at the top, the Emperor rules over the kings below him, and I don't see this as ruling over other people, That that's not what this is, right? This is like, you're on top of your energetic pyramid, it's like you're on top of your own energy, you're at the top of your own energy. Um, before maybe it, you know, everyone's had that experience of having your energy feel like it's just all over the place, right? And like, there's just chaos all over the place and you just can't deal. But like, it's like now you've gotten on top of it. You've stabilized, you've balanced, you've balanced all of your inner energy. You've balanced it, you've stabilized it. And now you've climbed on top of it. And now you're the emperor like of your own self, right? You're the emperor of your own self. And this is going to be 
so important going into the energies that we've got coming up. But you don't need to worry about next week now. Only worry about this week, right? Only worry about this week. And I want a final message about this, right? A final message about this because it's good. this whole thing, um, the square, Saturn squaring the nodes and having all of this kind of take a pause at uh, 22 degrees is going to be highlighted this week because of, oh, this thing, not this, not this deck. This, the, okay. These two decks. Um, it's going to be highlighted this week with Mercury, right? You're going to have an experience of this in your mind. There's a lesson from Saturn this week, and it is Saturn is challenging you. He's saying you. This is a lesson we all. This is this is. It's not a lesson. It, this is a skill. This is a skill that we all need to practice because it will be one of the most beneficial things for us to learn at this time. Is to really be able to catch yourself thinking thoughts that do not help you, and go. That thought is useless to me right now. That thought is only causing me anxiety and stress. That thought is just, it doesn't deserve to be in my brain and to just take that thought and chuck it out the window and be done with it. <laughs> like that is the skill to like to really finally master this week. Of course, sometimes you've had luck with it. Sometimes you haven't. Sometimes those thoughts have just gotten the better of you, right? But this week it's like, this is the thing to learn. <laughs> this is the skill to practice. This is the skill to own, to just toss those thoughts out the window, right? Um, you know, and like, if you, if you want to like develop some kind of, um, like practice that helps you do that, right? Then do that. It could be sitting in meditation. It could be like something me and my husband do. Sometimes if one of us has like a thought that is like plaguing us and we just can't get it out, we go to the other one and go, I need help getting rid of this thought. And we just like put our foreheads together and put our hands out and we go, okay, gathering the thought up, gathering the thought up. And then we literally just like grab the thought and chuck it out the window. <laughs> like, and it helps. It helps to have someone help you do that. Right. And, but if you don't have someone to do that, just call in some spiritual being and do it with them, right? And just chuck it out the window or flush it down the toilet or burn it with fire, like whatever, you know, whatever metaphor works for you, right? It can help to have like a little like mini practice that help you with that. Um, and then eventually it just becomes easier and you get more and more skillful at this because you already have a level of skill at this, but this is like coming into the mastery of it, right? Really getting, like owning this and just going, okay, that, that thought, that thought is bothering me. I'm shutting the door on it. I'm tossing it out the window. And this is important because look at this, like you're stepping into leadership and this is energetic leadership. I mean, physical leadership for some, right? Um, <laughs> but this is, all of you watching this are like spiritual energetic leaders on like on the planet in terms of consciousness. And you don't always give yourself credit for that, right? Because of course, you're, you sometimes you can be sitting at home, not really doing anything. Maybe you've, you know, got challenges in, in your physical 3D life and you feel like you're not living up to expectations or not living up to what you could be doing or not living up to what other people are doing. And it's like, <laughs> you need to give yourself so much more credit for what you do energetically for the planet and that your life is exactly the way it is because of the service that you were doing, because of the work you were doing, right? Because of the work you are doing, because of the, like, the, the help that you are, are providing, right? To the shift in consciousness, to the evolution in consciousness. You are, you are this leader and it's like you just, you don't always see yourself as that, but you are, you are, you are. And it is so important to like be able to see yourself as the leader that you are, um, even, even when it is not reflected for you in your physical reality. Because if you don't recognize what you do for the universe, then you're just going to sit there feeling like you're failing <laughs> all the time when you're not, you are, ta you have taken on some of the most enormous challenges, right? And it's like, if you have health challenges, mental health challenges, physical challenges with your, your job or just the situation you live in, or just with the, what has happened in your life, like the way your life has gone. It's like all of those challenges, you're working on an energetic puzzle. You're working on an energetic puzzle and you're solving it. You are solving it every day. You are solving it. Um, it, it's like, we don't, we don't appreciate enough the complexity of the energy that we live in, the complexity of the energy of the universe and the complexity of just how everything is interconnected, right? If, if you have a bad day and then you overcome it, that is a victory, right? That is a victory for the universe. Um, if you have 
a bad 10 years <laughs> and you're still alive. That is a victory for the universe. It's like, are you still here in your body? The fact that you have that you are still here in your body is an incredible accomplishment and achievement. And it, it is it is of service to the whole planet and the whole universe. It's like you don't understand. <laughs> I don't I don't have words for this, guys. I don't have words like to emphasize how important everything that you do is and how significant everything that you do is, including just getting out of bed and breathing and brushing your teeth and existing in this body. It's like you don't understand how important it is. I I, I cannot conceive of it, right? Like it's like the universe is trying to like convey this emotion to me and this is what they want you to feel. They want you to feel how important it is that you exist, okay? And how significant all the stuff, how significant it is that you are here doing what you do, whatever it is that you do. And it's like they're really asking for a complete shift in your perspective because they're saying it's like the, the way you think that you're not living up to expectations. It's almost like it's insane. <laughs> I mean, insanity is the, the human word that I would use, but right? that's not the word the universe would use because they don't perceive anything like that. But to use just, you know, English casual speak, it's like it's insane that you don't, <laughs> it's insane that you don't understand, that you can't, that you can't feel how important it is that you are alive <laughs> and here, right? Um, like I don't, I don't have words for this. I, you'll just have to feel the energy, okay? You'll just have to feel the energy and and feel into how significant it is that you are here, that you are you, and that you are working through the challenges of your life, and that it has so much. It is so healing to the universe. It is so of service to consciousness, and it 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 it, it is what allows creation to create. It is what allows existence to exist. It is so important. And it is important that you f begin to feel that. Feel for that in your life. Feel for that in your life. Contribution. <laughs> contribution. Awareness of linked contribution. <laughs> this is exactly, yes, yes, yes. Exactly what I was trying to articulate with just my enthusiasm because I don't have words, right? All I can do is enthuse at you at this point, right? <laughs> everything is linked. Every single thing is linked. Like what is a victory to you, right? A victory doesn't need to be coming like the CEO of a fortune 500 company. <laughs> I mean, although it can be, but like a victory, like guys, I remember days when I was so depressed that I like, it took me an hour to get dressed. I literally had to crawl across the floor to get to my closet to put on pants because like I couldn't get up. And I know if you've never been that kind of depressed, you, you, you might be like, how can you not, how can you be so depressed? You can't walk. But if you've been there, then you know, right? If you've been there, you know, at least one person watching this knows, <laughs> at least one person knows that sometimes putting on pants is a victory like none other, right? A victory like none other. I'm getting so many shivers from talking about this, right? <sighs> and if anyone is in that, in that space where you're, where you, where your enormous victory is brushing your teeth and putting on pants, then it's like, treat that as the victory that it is, right? And I am here to just like, let you know that, that, that's, that you move on from that level of victory into greater and greater levels of victory. So it's wherever that you're at, there's a greater level of victory, right? So there have been times in my life where putting on pants was the most I could do in a day, right? Like the most, that was it. That was the only thing I could accomplish. I couldn't even stand up to get to the closet. I had to crawl on my belly across the floor on the carpet to get to my closet because I was so depressed. I could literally not stand up, okay? I put on pants while I was lying on the floor, okay? <laughs> and, and now, like, I don't experience, that's completely gone from my experience. For three years now, I, I don't experience anything like that whatsoever. I, I am healed from that. And I have moved on from that. And it was funny, just this morning, I was sitting there, because, um, like, you know, when I was depressed all the time, and for me, it wasn't, it's not, for me, it was bipolar depression. So I would swing from severe depression to extreme psychotic mania and, like, all, all, all over the place all the time, right? Um, and the whole time, I just had this feeling like I had to just keep, climbing up out of it, right? I had to just keep fighting. I had to just keep striving. I had to just keep struggling to, to better myself, to improve my life, to, to like, to get it together, right? Just every day, every day, every day. It didn't matter how long I had been struggling. I'd been struggling for years and years and years just to struggle one more day. And that was all I could do. But it's like, now, even though I'm completely removed from that experience, that is completely like the, the, my past experience, right? I'm not in that space anymore at all. Haven't been for years. Um, but this morning I was starting to feel like there's a new layer. It's like it's almost like another layer of that, another layer of that. It's like even though I live my life in, in happiness and, and joy and, and bliss and contentment and peace so often, so often now, right? I was I was feeling like 
I can do one better. I can, I can rise above this again. And it felt almost like the feeling I used to get when I was like rising up out of a deep depression, right? I could feel it. I could feel it when it was happening because with bipolar, you swing up out of the depression. At least that's how it was for me. I would swing up out of it into mania, but there'd be this brief period where I'd be like in the in-between. I'd be like, yeah, this is great. Like a roller coaster going up, right? That feeling of swinging up out of it onto something like bigger and better and beautiful, like swinging up. I'm starting, I was feeling that today, right? I was feeling that and I was like, wow, but like if life is already so good, where at, where does it go now? Like, and I could feel that I'm gonna be able to look back at this period in my life and go, wow, I can't believe it is so much better even than that, right? And I was starting to be able to identify piece, like things about my life that even though I don't consider them depression now, I might, in the future, look back and go, wow, that was not a very good place to be. Like certain things I stress out about, right? Certain things I worry about, things I have anxiety about, things I stress about. I feel like that, I can rise up out of that, right? So some of you could be down in the deep depression, you're rising up out of that. Some of you could already be doing really well, but maybe there's some anxiety and some stress in your life and you're rising up out of that, right? Or there's a whole spectrum. So it's wherever you're at, you're rising up out of it. And, um, And yeah, that is your contribution. That is your journey. That is your leadership. That is how you show the way. That is how you find the way. That is how you create the way. You're, you're, every time you come up out of wherever that you are, right? Every time you rise higher, you are finding the way. You are showing others the way. You are creating the way. You are solving the problem. You are crunching the numbers. You are running the, the algorithm. Like you're doing it, right? You're doing it. You're finished. You're building the puzzle. You're, you're doing it. You're getting to the end of the race. You're doing it. Pick whatever metaphor you want. You're doing it. You're doing it. And it is so important. It, it, it contributes to the entire universe, to the entire, to beyond the universe, to all of consciousness, all that is. It creates, it builds, it expands. It is, it is. I'm going to leave you guys there. Sending you so much love and light. Bye.